Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for our new day, Lord God. We thank you for life in our mortal bodies, Lord God, and for bringing us here in peace and in good health and in strength, Lord God. You deserve all the honor, all the glory and the praise, and we give it to you right now in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. And Father in Christ, Lord God, as we go about into this world post-COVID, we know it's not gone. But if there is one person that remains, Lord God, it's you. Your promises are sure. Your promise keeping God, Lord God, and you have never, ever failed us. And Father God, at this time, we ask you for your precious blood to cover us, cover our homes, cover our families, cover our workplaces, Lord God. And of course, cover our churches, that we may continue to do your work and do your will that you have called us to do during this time. So, Father, in Christ, Lord God, as you said in your word, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in your sight and give ear to your commands and keep all of your statues, you will put none of the diseases on which you have brought on those Egyptians, for you are the Lord who heals you. But dear Father, once we trust in you and heed your voice, Lord God, you have told us in your word that you will keep us from it. So, Father, I'm asking you that, those persons hearing my voice right now, dear Father, reading your word will be covered under your precious blood. And then those persons, dear Father, who have encountered it, they may be healed as well in Jesus' name, Lord God. So, Father, in Christ, just touch, touch the speaker as well, Lord God. I pray that as he disseminates and spreads your word and teaches and preaches, I pray that Dear Father, your word will go there and will not return void, but it will accomplish everything you have set out. It has set out to be done, Lord God. And I pray that we may apply it to our lives. And for those persons who don't know you, we pray that know these are the times that they will come to know and receive you as Lord and Savior in their life, Lord God. 
and most of all, seek your forgiveness and repent of their wicked ways. So thank you very much for life, for your precious blood, and for covering and directing us. And may you go with us in all of our endeavors and keep us under your precious blood and under the shadow of your wings. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Listeners, delighted that you are available to share in this devotion. Let us pray. O loving Father, whose mercy sustain us day by day, we thank you for the blessings of life. We thank you for the work you give us to do, for the challenges you provide that keep us energized and sensitive to your direction. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, for the guidance and protection of your Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Thank you, Lord, that through Christ we have entered into a new and eternal relationship with you. So help us to see a new vision of your church and its impact on our communities. And even as your light reveals new truth to us, 
Enable us to use those gifts with which you have entrusted us and strengthen us for the task ahead. We pray in the name of the one who gave his life for us, even our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We read now from the Gospel according to St. John at chapter 2, verse 1 through to verse 11. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of Christ. Have you ever said of yourself, I feel like a new man? or woman even, especially following some rewarding activity or having taken a holiday. Our lives, my friends, are full of fresh starts, new beginnings. We graduate from school and university. We take on employment. We marry, have children, even along the way, we may change jobs which we hope would bring us greater satisfaction. Life is replete with transitions that we must manage. In this passage from St. John, Jesus is about to begin his public ministry. He is embarking on an entirely new phase of his life. He is about to change the world. Those of us intimately familiar with the Gospel according to John would immediately realize that he does not enter into a narrative on the birth and genealogy of Jesus like his fellow evangelists. Rather, he short-circuits everything telling us about God becoming human. The Word became flesh, he wrote, and dwelt among us. Thereafter, the concentration is on signs and works, the persistent theme of John. His emphasis is on Jesus manifesting his glory so that we may believe in him and share the life he offers. So as Jesus begins his history-changing work, John presents him attending a wedding, representing a new beginning, and he performs a miracle that in itself is very symbolic. John wants us to understand, I suggest, that Jesus has come to create something entirely new. We learn that in biblical times, 
a wedding could run for a week, and it was probably not uncommon for the wine to run low. That's why wine was often diluted, so that it would last longer. And after several days of feasting, who would notice anyway? Mary, the mother of Jesus, appears to be assisting with the hosting of the event, since she is among the first to know that the wine is gone, and she gives directions to the servants. She tells Jesus about the shortage, and he responds in an unusual way. Woman, what concern is that to you when to me? Something at which many may take offense. But could it be, my friends, that Jesus was indicating a change relationship? No longer is this a mother and son relationship. From this point on, the primary focus is on the Heavenly Father and His will. When we come to know Christ, we also enter into a series of new relationships. We come to know God, not simply as our Creator, but as our Father. We come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. We come to know the Holy Spirit as Counselor and Guide. And we enter into a new relationship with the community of faith, the Church. To ancient cultures, wine was a symbol of life. It was the primary liquid drank to sustain life. And in creating wine where only water was before, John symbolically demonstrates that Jesus creates life where none previously existed. The focal point of the entire passage, I suggest, is in verse 10, where we read, You have kept the good wine until now. Hosts would normally serve the best wine at the beginning of a meal or celebration when tastes were most sensitive. But Jesus has transformed the water into the wine of highest quality. Likewise, Jesus has come to offer us new life. And it is far better than anything that we have known or experienced before. In Christ, the most abundant life is now available. The water has been transformed into wine. My friends, Jesus Christ reaches out to us right now with the offer of new life a better life than we have ever known before. He has created a new day, and we are invited to the celebration. Let us pray. Almighty God, who loves us despite our unworthiness, and who reaches out to us in loving forgiveness, even in the midst of our sin and rebellion, how grateful we are for your grace. We offer praises for your great loving kindness. As we see the earth begin to emerge from its slumber and bloom again with new life, we remember that you brought us from death to life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Remind us, Lord, that the new life you have given us is not dependent on anything we are or possess within us. Rather, that new life is dependent on you alone. So thank you, Lord, that whatever we have been or are today can be wiped clean. Whatever sin has tainted us, whatever evil paths we have walked, 
can be wiped clean through the atoning work of Jesus Christ who has overcome evil and death on the cross and even now intercedes for us. Thus we can rejoice in his resurrection power. For through your grace we share in that power as well. And we can pray these words in his precious name. Amen. Lord, you have always given bread for the coming day, and though we are poor, today we believe. Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day, and though we are weak, today we believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day, and though of anxious heart, today we believe. Lord, you have always kept us safe in trials, and now tried as we are, today we believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day, and though it may be hidden, today we believe. Lord, you have always lightened this darkness of ours, and though the night is here, today we believe. And now from the one who is indeed the giver of all good gifts, go and share what God has given you. Go and proclaim that God's love is here. Go in the power of God's Spirit to make all things new. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.